Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part 17 of Steambot Chronicles. We just had ourselves one hell of a concert, and now we got something new to look forward to. Have you seen Savory? Yeah, we have a date later. That's some kind of joke, right? I don't believe you. Oh, Basil, I know you're in love with Savory, and you worship the ground she walks on, and you probably sneak into her room to sniff her high heels or whatever, but come on, man. It's just a friendly date. We're not going to get physical or intimate. It's not like I'm going to take her to my hotel room so we can have some hot cocoa later. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, that won't happen. Don't worry. It's, it's going to be squeaky clean gonna be completely casual, completely friendly. Don't worry, Basil. You don't have a shot, Basil. You don't have a shot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being a jerk. I'm being a horrible, horrible person. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Savory is hanging out in the Station Hotel. Well, I guess she's hanging out in the Riverside Hotel, which is connected to the Station Hotel, because there are two hotels that are literally connected to each other by a bridge. Like, you can actually walk from one hotel to the other Without going outside, it's kind of interesting, but either way, we're here. Why is it like this? I'm sorry. Welcome to the Riverside Restaurant, where the gentle sound of the river and the magnificent view of Happy Garland make every meal a special one. Excuse me? Are you Rosa? Yes, that's me. How do you know my name? I talked with your fiancé, Algernon, in the other hotel, huh? I'm sorry, I'm working right now. Could you meet me tonight at Memorial Park? Yeah, sure, I could do that. But either way, if I'm on a date, I gotta dress for the event. I gotta dress for the occasion, so... Boop! Yeah, yeah, now I'm looking pretty fancy. Now I'm looking pretty good. I look like I belong in a Disney movie. <laughs> but either way, let's get our date on. Ah, welcome! You must be vanilla. Your friend is waiting at the table. Right this way, please. I'm sorry, were you waiting long? Not at all. Don't worry about it. I will have this with white sauce and the vinaigrette. Excellent choice, madame. And for the gentleman. have one of these, two of these, and, and those. Thanks, Jeeves. Well, uh, yes, if you are indeed serious, sir. What crawled under his cummerbund? So do tell, how was the desert? I've never been there myself, but I hear it's a pretty rough place. It was a lot of fun. Connie and I swam in an oasis. Hmm, so there's an oasis there? How can they expect decent people to travel without the train anyway? Well, how was the food? Oh my gosh, I can't believe how delicious it was! Oh, I'm glad you liked it. After a wonderful dinner, we gazed out over the river, enjoying the cool breeze. So, can I ask you something? What do you think of everyone in the band? I want your honest opinion. You're one of us now, after all. Basil first. Come on, what do you think of him? Basil... Acts like a little kid sometimes. You know, I don't really pay that much attention to him. I see. Well, you should at least get to know him a little as a friend. How about Marjoram? Marjoram? Is always so calm. I think it's cool how he's always so calm and composed. Yep, without him, the band would probably fall apart. Next, what about Fennel, the guy who left? Fennel... has a distinct look and hairstyle. And I don't trust him. I hate those stupid shades of his. And what's with the greaser look? <laughs> yeah, it makes him look pretty unfriendly, doesn't it? People are trying to emulate his style, though. Guess you can't predict fashion. So, what about Connie? You've spent a lot of time with her. Connie... ...is gentle and kind. 
She's a kind, gentle person, and, and I find that attractive. It was nice of her to help you out. You should definitely let her know how much you appreciate it. Okay, lastly, what about me? Savory? You're more mature than the others. Your maturity is very attractive. <laughs> Thanks, but you're embarrassing me, Vanilla. Thanks for talking. I learned a lot about you. Well, if it isn't Sir John. It's been quite a while, sir. Heading home? That's Sir John, Mallow's father. He's a famous doctor and the director of St. John's Ward. If your head's still hurting, you should probably have him take a look. I mean, he's your friend's dad, so you should at least stop by. Here, I'll mark the hospital on your map and everything. Oh, that's right. Marjoram wanted to talk to you, so make sure you find him. Tonight was a lot of fun. Thanks. I'm heading back to the hotel. I am a smooth operator. Hell yeah. It was a good night. It was a good night. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Sir John is the father of Mallow, who may or may not be the tutorial kid from part one, who may or may not be Vanilla's friend. Things are getting really interesting. And again, if you missed part 16 because you thought I was just exploring Happy Garland and I wasn't checking out the plot or anything, I did go into the newspaper place and find an article that showed that Chicory got run over by a car and he was playing around with Sir John's son, which is apparently Mallow. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. Things are tying up rather nicely. Things are connecting. But uh, I'm going to go visit the hospital. But first, I'm actually going to get my bike and I'm going to go to Memorial Park to meet with Rosa because I want to keep progressing with this Algernon Rosa Hotel side quest that I've got going on right now. So you don't get a good view of Memorial Park at night. Like I, I try to look at the tower, but it's so dark out and there's no like lighting anywhere. You know, there's no lights shining on the tower. It'd be nice if they have like spotlights beaming at the tower. So you can see how cool it looks at night, but uh, now you only really get a good view of it during the daytime, during noon hour when the sun's out and everything's bright and colorful, you know. So I'll just have to deal with it. I'll just have to deal with it. Oh, why is it like this? Let me officially introduce myself. I'm Rosa. I want to marry Algernon, but my father is the owner of the Riverside Hotel. And he says the only way he'll allow me to marry Algernon is if he can gain ownership of the Station Hotel. As you know by now, the Station Hotel and Riverside Hotel are bitter rivals. In fact, my grandpa's dying words were, Don't lose to them. But I don't think that's what he had in mind. Uh, why did it have to come to this? It's a real Romeo and Juliet situation here. If Romeo and Juliet were owners of hotels, <laughs> or employees of hotels, or related to the people who own the hotels, you know what I mean. But either way, I'm going to be coming back to this quest much, much later in the playthrough. It's just something I wanted to kick off now so you get a good idea of it, you know. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of side quests near the end of the game. There's, there's so many like things about the plot that kind of lock you into doing the plot, and I can't really do other things. Like, for example, when I go to bed tonight at the hotel, something's going to trigger. And then the next day, I am on a tight schedule, and I can't compete in the arena, and I can't rest up. I have to just go directly to my next destination. They won't let you fight in the arena or let time pass or whatever. So you really do have to just go from spot to spot to spot. And there are certain things I can't show off until I get through the plot. But, you know, there's a lot of side quests and I will get to them, don't worry, don't you worry. But either way, I have biked over to the hospital. You can tell by the nice pink heart sign that says hospital. I wish real hospitals looked like that. Or at least had that logo, that'd be fun. And uh, we gotta find this Sir John, apparently a renowned doctor in these parts. Good evening, is there something I can help you with? I wanna see Sir John. The director's room is on the third floor, in the back. Cool, cool. I think Sir John is in today. There's no other doctor like Sir John. Hmm. He's pretty good, huh? All the nurses here treat me with such kindness. It's like they're all the same person. It's like they all have the same character model and everything. 
Uh, I could explore every inch of the hospital, but this is like one of those things where Steambot Chronicles has like a little bit too much detail. We're like, I could go into the second floor rooms. I could go into all the different rooms back there and there's nothing in them. Like really, I could just show off like the third floor rooms, for example. And there's a room with a skeleton. Very, very tall skeleton. Some kind of specimen? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's too spooky for me. But there's an identical room just like this on the second floor. And there's no reason to go into this room. You never have to go into this room. I don't even think there's a side quest tied to this room. I might be wrong. If I am wrong, tell me in the comments. The five of you who have actually mastered and played this game. But, uh... There's not a lot to see in the hospital other than Sir John. I don't know why you would come here otherwise. And so it just, they, they bothered to model this entire building and let you go into the rooms and see everything, but you never have to be in here. I don't know if it's cut content or what, but it's just, there's a lot of detail and a lot of stuff in this building, even though you don't really interact with it and you don't really come back here all that much, but hey. You do get sick though, so I guess that might count sometimes. You know, if you have irritable bowels. <laughs> hmm? Who are you? I'm Vanilla, a friend of Mallow's. Mallow, eh? Is that so? Well, unfortunately, Mallow isn't here. You... that pendant! I gave that to Mallow for his birthday! Where the hell did you get that? I think a friend gave it to me. A friend? But that could mean... Why don't I tell you a little bit about Mallow? Five years ago, something happened. So he went overseas to attend school. But you see, he's supposed to be back by now. I received a letter last month stating he would be on the SS Juniper Berry. However, it never arrived. I still don't know exactly what happened. In fact, I have my own suspicions that it sank. If anything were to happen to Mallow, if you do find out where he is, you must tell me immediately. Okay, I'll help you find Malo. I appreciate it more than you could know. The pieces are coming together, my friend. It's confirmed that Malo was on the SS Juniper Berry. That's the boat that crashed on Seagull Beach. That's where we came from. That's the whole tutorial segment. We were getting onto the Juniper Berry with that pirate lady. And just to really confirm it, there's a portrait in this office showing a father and son, Sir John and his child, Mallow. And when we look, he's got a bowl haircut, red tie. That is absolutely the tutorial character we played in part one. Mallow was definitely the character we played in part one. Vanilla does know Mallow and someone tried to kill him. <laughs> The SS Juniper Berry was attacked by a blue trotmobile that shot rockets because it destroyed that boulder in part one, you know? So someone in a blue trotmobile attacked the SS Juniper Berry, mad about, you know, Mallow, probably because of chicory. Oh man, my, my galaxy brain is going off. I'm trying to solve the mystery. It's all coming together. It's all starting to make sense. It's all coming into place. Yes, yes, yes. Steambot Chronicles does not go that deep into the mystery, you know, it doesn't try to explain every little detail until you get to the very end, but it's nice to think about these things before they happen, before the big twists are revealed, before all that stuff comes into frame. It's, 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 it's interesting, it's interesting. Welcome. But yeah, Mallow is definitely a guy we know, it's a guy we played as. I wonder when we'll meet him again. Welcome back. I just booked our next gig. It's in New Haven. Don Puccini is celebrating the completion of a new ship. We'll be performing on a luxury liner this time. I can't wait. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Let's make it our best concert yet. We're leaving for New Haven tomorrow morning, so meet us at Happy Garland Station. Basil and I will be up early, because we have to carry our instruments. <sighs> have a good night. So that's going to be it for part 17, folks. Um, I wanted to end this video with a gigantic linearama segment. The dinner scene, the date scene with Savory has so much alternate dialogue that I had to make it part of the video to show you just how much. So have fun. I'll see you in part 18. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> 
just relax. I'm starving. <laughs> we should order then. I'll take the most expensive thing on the menu. <laughs> Very good, sir. Oh, pricey. I can't wait to see it. I'll, I'll have what she's having. <clears throat> Very good, sir. I'll have my usual. Your usual, sir? <clears throat> uh, yes, of course. Excellent choice, sir. Well, well, I see you've been here before. Very impressive. But I hear it's a pretty rough place. No kidding. We were with a caravan that got attacked by thieves. Oh my, that does sound dangerous. I'm glad you're okay. Oh, it's huge and we were really lost. I almost cried. Well, it happens, I guess. How was the food? Eh, you know, food is food. I see. I really didn't like it all that much. Oh, I'm sorry. It was rude of me not to ask what kind of food you like. Basil... acts like a little kid sometimes. I like his childlike sense of wonder. <laughs> it's cute how curious he is about everything. I hate how immature he is. He has no focus at all. Oh, well, I guess it might seem like that because he's so curious. He's always cheerful and ready for anything. I appreciate his positive attitude. Yeah, it really picks you up when you're having a bad day. I hate the fact that he never takes anything seriously. Really? I mean, sometimes I'd rather he be quiet, but... Plays bass. He definitely knows how to play bass. Oh, we can always count on him to back up the melody. I just can't stand his bass. Oh? Well, I guess we all have our own musical tastes. Marjoram... is always so calm. I can't stand how nothing rattles him. Oh, well, he's not really as cold as you think he is. He's reliable, I guess. He's definitely one of those kind and reliable guys. Oh, yeah, I'm very trustworthy. He handles our scheduling and accounting. I think he enjoys it. Reliable guys like him really cheese me off. <laughs> what? Are you saying it's bad to be trustworthy? Plays drums. The guy can definitely hammer away at the drums. I think he expresses his personality through the drums. He hits those drums like he's trying to kill them. I don't really know how else we could follow the beat. Um, I haven't really thought that much about him. I see. Well, if you ever need help, he's definitely the guy to ask. Fennel has a distinct look and hairstyle. I really dig his shades and slicked hair look. <laughs> People have actually started trying to emulate his style. Do you want to give it a try? You can change hairstyles at the barber shop. He's passionate about his music. Even though he doesn't look it, he's really passionate. I think he takes music more seriously than any of us. That guy takes everything way too seriously. Really? I always thought he was just trying to act cool. Plays guitar. He shreds on that guitar. There aren't many people who play as well as he could. He'll be hard to replace. I couldn't take much more of his guitar. Oh, I'm glad he left. Huh. A little harsh. But hey, I guess you have better taste than I thought. Nah, I could take him or leave him. Yeah, you didn't really get to talk with him before he left, huh? So, what about Connie? Connie? She's cute. She's really cute. <laughs> I knew you'd say something to that effect. She's so cute it's practically sickening. Oh, do you think she's putting on an act or something? Seems very sad about something. There's a sadness in her heart that I find compelling. Yeah, it kind of makes you want to protect her, doesn't it? She holds on to her sadness and just won't let it go. Ah, so annoying. Uh, that can't really be helped. We all have our problems. Is gentle and kind. She's one of those nice people who always butt in where they don't belong. Really? Well, it might not be appropriate for me to say this, but Connie helped you because she felt it was the right thing to do. Is strong-willed. Mm, she's so strong-willed. She certainly holds up her end. She's way too strong-willed. Yeah, once she makes up her mind, that's the way it's gonna be. We weren't really surprised when she charged back to Nefroburg. I don't know why, but... I don't know why, but I really like her. Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I hope you two continue to be good friends. I don't know why, but I just don't like her. Oh, that's too bad. Connie would be depressed if she knew you felt that way. As a singer, 
She has the perfect voice to be a singer. Her voice does have an enchanting quality, doesn't it? I'm actually a little jealous. Uh, her voice is like fingernails on a chalkboard. Huh. I happen to think she has a lovely singing voice. But you're allowed to have your own opinion, even if you are wrong. Eh, I'm not really that interested in Connie. Really? Well, that's not how it looks to the rest of us. Okay, lastly, what about me? Savory? You're sexy. You're very sexy. Oh, well, that's good to know. You come off a little skanky. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm sorry I dragged you here tonight, then. You're more mature than the others. You really need to learn to loosen up a little. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm sorry I dragged you here tonight, then. You take what you want. I admire how aggressive you are. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Am I really like that? Aggressiveness is such a turn-off. Well, in that case, maybe I shouldn't have forced you to go out with me. As a backup singer? You're a beautiful backup singer. Are you talking about me or my voice? <laughs> You're not the greatest backup singer. Huh. I suppose I'll just have to work harder. Compared to Connie, I prefer you over Connie. Are you sure? I feel a little bad for Connie now. I like you even less than Connie. After that remark, I assure you the feeling is mutual. I'm not really interested in you, Savory. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. We can still be friends. Thanks for talking.